Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching circuits one. Let's see if we can derive the current in an RLC circuit. So let's start by knowing that we're going to be deriving the natural response, not the stepped or forced response. So we'll choose the series instead of the parallel. First step, let's write voltage equations for R, L, and C. We'll use Ohm's law and our knowledge of inductors and capacitors. You should have learned these when studying R, L, and R, C circuits. Then we're gonna write a KVL, just like many of our more simple circuits. We write the KVL and we see that we now have three terms. This term is a derivative, this one's an integral. Let's remove the integral and come up with all derivatives. We'll differentiate both sides. Now we have a equation that has a first derivative, a second derivative, and I, some current that we're interested in. What's the solution? It is I A to the E multiplied by E raised to the ST. Source, just trust me, bro. Well, if you've taken differential equations, you'll know that this is a really common guess that we can use for solving differential equations like this. If you've taken that class, great, you know this. If you haven't, that's okay too. But just know this is a classic guess. The reason that we do that is that if we take this guess, put it into the I here, here, and here, we see that we're gonna get a solution that looks like this, where the a e to the st, this term our, of our guess can be pulled out and then we can separate this into two parts, our guess and this special characteristic equation. Okay, so you can do this on your own um, and I'll show this here, uh, gives you a little example if you need to pause and check this, but you can see that our guess will work and that this is kind of a classic guess. You'll learn more in your differential equations class. So that solution that we came up with, we can pull out our guess, and then we have this other part of the equation that is the characteristic equation. Now this whole thing is equal to zero, right? That came from our KVL. This first part, it can't be zero. If this goes to zero, then this isn't an interesting solution. It just means there's never any energy in the system to begin with. So therefore, this other part, this part should go to zero somehow. Then we're gonna have interesting solutions. So we call this the characteristic equation and we wanna know the values of S that came from our guess. We wanna know what values of S could force this into zero. So let's use the quadratic formula and find the roots. We'll call those roots S1 and S2. It gives us three cases, right? As you know from your previous courses in math, two real roots, one real root, or two complex conjugate roots. Those are the three special cases. So these are equations for S1 and S2, which force this to zero. And there's three possible cases for that. They lead to three different types of what we call damping. So depending on the S1, S2 values, they could be underdamped, critically damped, or overdamped. Again, S1 and S2, these come from the values of R, L, and C that are in your original circuit. So you'll need to know those if you wanna get an exact solution. Now, because it's uh, these S1, S2 are a little bit complex, let's actually convert them into alphas and omegas. This is just gonna simplify things down a little bit so that we don't have such complex expressions for S1 and S2. For the series case, alpha is equal to R over 2L and omega naught is equal to one over LC. When, once we've made this alpha and omega, we can quickly separate our damping cases by using and comparing the alpha and omega. So we can have repeated real roots where alpha equals omega, complex conjugates where alpha is less than omega naught, and negative real roots where alpha is greater than omega naught. So this is an example where you could try it. What are the roots, S1, S2? You have R, L, and C, you should be able to find them. Okay, <clears throat> pause there and then go on once you've gone that. So here's the solution forms that could exist with uh, depending on your values of alpha and omega. So if you have alpha greater than omega, that's the overdamp solution. The overdamp solution looks like this. This is the case that we uh, expected based on our guess of A, E to the ST. It's a little beyond a circuits class, but basically we, because we had two different roots, we can guess that the full solution is a superposition of the solution from the two different roots, so root S1 and root S2. The critically damped uh, case um, is a little bit different. Again, this is beyond the scope of most circuits courses, and in my class, you don't need to know why that's the case, but this T shows up, so it's a little bit different, but the form is relatively similar. The underdamped case where alpha is less than omega that case is actually very similar to the overdamped case, 
but you can do some uh, transformations based on uh, the Euler formula to get between the sines and the cosines. For most classes, you probably don't actually need to know how to derive these and how to do that differential equation because um, that's more of a differential equations problem. In my class, you don't need to. What's really important is what, what is, is it being able to determine alpha, omega, S1, and S2. Also notice this uh, omega D is another special term that we'll uh, define later on that comes from your alpha and alpha uh, and your omega naught. So the last things that we need to talk about before the end of this video are how to get A1 and A2 because those appear in each one of these solutions. So A1 and A2, they appear in each case. We have two different ones. We have two unknowns. That means we need two equations to solve for this. Well, where are we gonna get those equations? Let's use our initial conditions. So the first initial condition that we have comes from the inductor. And if we know the inductor at zero minus and zero plus, we can take that I is zero. So this is zero plus, and you can get equation one that concludes A1 and A2 as your unknown. You can do that for each case overdamped critical and underdamped case. Then what about equation two? This one's a little bit more complex, but again, we must use our initial conditions. This time we'll use the initial condition of the capacitor. So the voltage, what is the voltage across the inductor at T zero plus? Well, this changed instantaneously, right? The voltage across an inductor can change instantaneously. We don't know for sure what it is, uh, but we can do a rearrangement of this and get this equation. From the initial conditions, we know these, this is what you did in your RL and RC circuits. Now, can we figure out what this VL is that changed instantaneously? Yes, we can using a KVL. So we'll write a KVL around the circuit again. Then we rearrange and solve for VL at zero naught. We can find this because this initial condition comes down here and this initial condition comes down here. The current IR is the same as the current IL, right? The current goes through both of these, so we can use that same initial condition. Now we know what that voltage was, despite the fact it changed instantaneously, we were able to use a KVL to figure out what that voltage was. That means that we know the result of the derivative, and we know what the result of that derivative is at a specific time, zero plus. Let's go on and use that. So now that we know the derivative of each one of these, we can take, or we can take a derivative of each one of these. I've omitted that for convenience, but you could verify on your own. Once we've taken the derivative of those, let's evaluate the derivative, right? We'll evaluate at t is equal to zero plus. That's gonna remove a whole bunch of terms, like in this one, right? It's gonna remove all of those terms. It's gonna take these terms, e to the whatever, into one. I've done that here. This is the simplification for each one of those second equations. So this is your second equation, and you can use the first equation and the second equation for each one of these cases to solve for A1 and A2. Your S1 and your S2, those come from that quadratic equation that we solved previously. Uh, same with the alpha and omega, that was a simplification that we used. The only thing that was a little bit different that I promised I would define for you was this omega D. The omega D is defined by omega naught and minus alpha, and it's just in order to uh, create a little bit of a simplification here. That's where it comes from. So uh, that is a quick summary of how to find the current for each case, over damped, under damped, and critically damped um, situations of your series RLC circuit. I think this might be the shortest series RLC circuit video on YouTube now, so I hope you enjoy it and it um, helps you understand circuits better. See you in the next video.